all of us. I wanted to move on to another thing, but subhanAllah, you brought up Sheikh Ibrahim, and we had this conversation about solidarity. I think it's a very profound missing piece of history when we talk about the solidarity of African Muslims with Palestine. SubhanAllah, it's actually a rich, understudied aspect of, and, and as we're seeing now, you know, Israel normalizing its relationships, being welcomed into Gulf countries today in Bahrain, UAE, and uh, African countries as well being forced under economic uh, restrictions to, to normalize. Sheikh Ibrahim was, Alam Ibrahim was actually one of the scholars who was writing uh, to the world and expressing solidarity with Palestine in a profound way. Can you talk about that? Because you mentioned discovering some of that literature. Yeah, subhanAllah. Not only was he writing these things, but he was actively traveling to Philistine to show his solidarity. But the story is interesting because the story begins. So I was reading the... An interesting fact before I even start. I met the Mufti of Palestine, the current Mufti of Philistine, but I met him in Senegal. And he had come to visit to show solidarity with the community of Sheikh Ibrahim Yass in Senegal because of all of the work that he saw their grandfather do for the Palestinian cause and all of the letters that he wrote to the different presidents and all of the different things that he did. Um, so I met him there in Senegal and we had, a, we had a brief conversation, alhamdulillah, and it was random for me to be in West Africa and meet him there. But he had traveled all the way from Philistine for a special ceremony because they had named a day they have an annual festival, but they had named a specific day after Palestine. And they were showing solidarity with Palestine and raising awareness for the, of the Palestinian cause in West Africa. But Sheikh Ibrahim's story with Palestine starts in 1937 when he goes on Hajj and he meets Hajj Amin al Husseini, who becomes the Mufti of Palestine after that. But at that time, they meet each other, they have a meeting, um, and they talk about the fact that there are plans by the world powers and colonization and all of the things that are happening not only in the Arab world but in Africa because the same people that were colonizing and devising the Middle East were the same people that were doing it in West Africa and the same people that were being affected were all Muslims who shared the same religion and so it shows you the 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 unifying power of Islam that this figure leaves uh, live, I think he was in Lebanon at the time he came for Hajj, he meets Sheikh Ibrahim from Senegal for Hajj, and they make a pact with each other that they're going to support each other in helping each of their countries attain freedom. And this is in 1937. Then in the 40s and the 50s, we see things develop, and Sheikh Ibrahim Yass is invited by Hajj Amin Husseini to join the Muslim World Congress, which is headed in Karachi, Pakistan. So he travels to Jerusalem, and I have a picture of him in front of Beitul Maqdis with Hajj Amin and with his wife and with his son. And then he travels to Pakistan as well. But what's interesting is in the 50s and 60s, if you read a lot of Sheikh Ibrahim Yass's poetry, he talks a lot and he makes a lot of tawassul and he makes dua for the Palestinians. So he visits Palestine and he talks about going to Hebron and making ziyara of Sayyidina Ibrahim al-Khalil and making ziyara. And then he's praying to Allah that Allah supports the people and frees them from the oppression that they're suffering. He writes letters, I've seen, he, he writes letters to Gamal Abdel Nasser, he writes letters to the president of the Arab League, he writes letters to all of the leaders of the Arab world, and he is, mashallah, a scholar that's not afraid to speak to people of authority and give them advice in a way that will rectify their affairs without any fear of any punishment. So one day he writes, there's one letter I saw, he said to um, the president of the Arab League, he said, you should be ashamed at the countries that you have authority over and the fact that you're allowing what is happening to the Palestinian people to happen. He said, because if it was us in West Africa, we would never have allowed this to happen. And he's constantly in all of his Juma khutbas making dua for Palestine. And he even has a guest house that he builds because he receives many guests. And so his house, and then he has a guest house, and his guest house, he names it Philistine. <laughs> so there's all of these, and there's a book written by one of his grandsons called, um, she he's called Sheikh Baba Kanyang. The book is in Arabic, but I'm working on translating it into English, inshallah. And the book is called Sheikh Ibrahim Yaswal Quds, Qissa tul Ishq al Khalida. A story of eternal love, the relationship between um, him. Because this shows the unity between us. The fact that when people are being oppressed, 
as the Prophet Sallallahu said, the Ummah should be like one body, that if you feel pain in one part of it, the whole body should feel pain. And so for him being West African, he had no ethnic ties with the people in Palestine. He had no, he had no ties with them in terms of alaqa to teen, but he had that alaqa to deen. He had no physical ties with them, but he had a spiritual connection with them because of the fact that they were Muslim, because of the fact that that was the home of Sayyidina Ibrahim and all of the Anbiya that we know, because of the fact that that was the place of Isra and Mi'raj, and because of all of the love that we should have for the land and for those figures, a land that, the Prophet, that Allah says in the Quran that he has blessed, then alhamdulillah, through that, he raised awareness in West Africa, and then he also raised awareness within the Middle East, which I think was a, was a beautiful thing. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. And uh, rahimahullah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate all of the oppressed peoples in Africa and Palestine, wherever they are, including here. Allahumma ameen. Uh,